Welcome back. The shooting deaths of eight people at a series of Atlanta area spas last week is shining a spotlight on anti-Asian racism. Six of those people killed were Asian women. Across the U.S., rallies are being held in a show of solidarity. Anti-Asian hate has been rooted deep in our country. Demonstrators in San Francisco gathered today to call for an end to the violence. Like other cities, officials say they are say they have also seen an increase in hate crimes against people of Asian descent. In the aftermath of COVID-19, both the U.S. and Canada have reported a rise in hate-motivated attacks. On the same week as those horrific events, one Asian American woman was supposed to be celebrating one of the happiest days of her life. Eileen Park's wedding to a former Vancouver mayor, Gregor Robertson, was featured in Vogue magazine. But Park says since the article was published, she's been the target of anti-Asian hate. She took to social media Sunday to speak out about the racist and sexist messages she's received. I was bombarded with hate-filled messages. People laughing about men having yellow fever, Asian women having universal slots, and comment after comment dismissing me as a young Asian girl. And the amount of disgusting DMs and mentions I got as a result it made me ill. And Eileen Park joins us tonight from Vancouver. Hi, Eileen. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah, thank you for inviting me, Janelle. So, you know, I, I said that off the top, you know, it must have felt pretty exciting to have this spread of one of the happiest days of your life featured in a major magazine. Were you prepared for all of this negative reaction? Did you expect that? We expected it to a certain degree. We did. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, we really didn't want to go public with our marriage, but at least the announcement of our marriage. But it started leaking, and so we realized we we eventually have to put something out there. And and then the torrent of hate just descended. Yeah, you mentioned that you were also hesitant to speak about the negative reactions that you got. Why was that, and, and why now? Why did you ultimately decide to do it? You know, Atlanta changed everything. Um, I feel like as Asian women, We've been suppressing our rage for decades, just absorbing the pain of the everyday microaggressions. But after seeing our own killed because of the world's silence, I could not remain silent anymore. Even as uncomfortable as it is to be this exposed and this vulnerable, I knew I had to say something about it. And when I fully started understanding the historical and current fetishization and hypersexualization of Asian women, and that has led to Asian deaths. I, could, I just had to say something about my personal experience. And I learned that war after war, Asian women were kept in oppression with modern sex slavery. I didn't have the language to express how I felt about all of this until recently after learning about that, learning about our history and reading account after account of brave Asian women coming forward. And I started understanding and crystallizing my own experiences and started started sharing them with everybody else. Yeah, I mean, you talk about how it's not just racism. It, you, you can't remove the, the intersection of sexism and misogyny, and, and you've just spoken a little bit about the history, but it's also been perpetuated through, through media. Um, we know through the stats that women are disproportionately impacted when it comes to these incidents of anti-Asian hate. Can you talk a little bit more about what you spoke about on Facebook um, on that intersection of, uh, of sexism? So I was uh, in politics for two years. I was the mayor of Portland's communications director. And before that, I was a reporter and an anchor for 12 years. And historically, the, the type of racism and the microaggressions that I faced were, were sporadic. But when I was in the mayor's office, it was constant. The discrimination started almost immediately. And I, I'm so glad that we are having an, a national, international conversation about this because I've never seen this before. So thank you so much for shedding light on this issue. It really just starts, the discrimination just starts with something as simple as saying that an Asian woman, a professional Asian woman is in the position that she's in because she slept her way to the top. That is deeply rooted in racist beliefs about a particular race in a particular sex. 
And so the combination of that has historically and currently hurt women like me, delegitimized them, dehumanized them, and prevented us from obtaining positions of senior leadership. I managed to do so, but it was a struggle. It was a struggle being credible and being taken seriously. You know, we've opened up this conversation partially because of what's happened through the last year through the pandemic and, mm -hmm. and you know, what happened last week in Atlanta. So the conversation has started, but what do you want to see actually done next to combat this? You know, it, it starts right here with conversations like this and examining in oneself what are the subconscious biases I have about the Asian community? When have I made them feel like they're foreign or exotic? When have I reinforced this stereotype? When have I dehumanized them by dismissing their pain? It starts there because for too long, our pain has been invisible. And you know, this has awoken the Asian community in ways I've never seen before. So do not wait until we die to care about us care about us while we're still alive, listen to our pain and don't be defensive. And, you know, I want to mention this because there were a few members of the media who decided to be very snarky about our wedding. And so when you're inclined to post something snarky or sarcastic, especially involving an Asian woman at this day and time, please don't be tone deaf or dismissive of the world of pain we're in right now and choose not to be complicit anymore in the minimization of anti-Asian racism and hate. I think it begins there, that right. acknowledgement. Eileen Park in Vancouver, thanks so much for sharing your story with us. Yeah, thank you for having me.